Hello, welcome to Project Stewbeam. So the end game here is to get something like this rotary dipole up on the top of the building. It's four stories high here, and not far from Paul Key. And yeah, it's going to be a challenge because everything I put up has to go out through the balcony windows or doors. Uh, so in this first video, we're going to be looking at setting up the rotator and getting that connected onto the balcony. I've already got a kind of little mast out there. It's a 55 mil mast. Uh, it's swaged poles from Moonraker, so four or five swaged poles connected together and, and riveted together to stop them falling apart. Now that's already out there with a HF 360 on the top, Sigma HF 360 works great. It could do with being a bit higher though. I've got a bit of a problem with it clearing the actual uh, roof at the top, so that'll be solved as part of this, this project. Um, but what we're going to do along the way is we're going to put a two meter vertical beam up uh, and play around on two meters. I might even do a live stream when I've got that up and running just to see how well we can get that working. We're going to try a ham stick dipole on this uh, rotator as well. I mean, you probably don't really need a rotator for, for these things, you know, <laughs> apart from the directional ones. So, yeah, the end game rotary dipole on the roof. If I can get that working, man, I will be happy. Yeah, I've got the EC101D here, I've got an Acon amp, and I'm playing around with crappy wires in the roof and a Sigma HF 360. It, it is, the, the antenna really is the weakest link in the chain here at the moment and, and this project is designed to solve that without having to move house. I rent here, the rent is relatively cheap. If I move there's no way I would be able to find somewhere that's uh, the same price. So whatever I spend on this antenna project it's it, I, I would spend a lot more in rent if I moved you know so so this is money well spent if i can make it work so just keep that in mind as well that you know i might spend 200 quid on stuff or 400 or even a grand but if i move house just to be able to put up an antenna it will cost me an extra grand a year in rent at least so yeah that's not happening um stick with it part one is the mast and the rotator okay here we have the rotator it's arrived today it's only a £200 cheap job compared to the expensive ones. That's what's inside. Just a, obviously a step down gearing system and three uh, wires. I've connected those up to the bottom of the box. So there's the model number AR600XL. Yeah, that's about it. I mean, it's not really designed for massive HF antennas, is it? It's really just a TV, you know, or small uh, 2 and 70 or something like that. But it will work and until it wears out. And that's what it's here for. Obviously, if this experiment with this rotary dipole actually works, and I get to the point where this thing breaks, then we'll think about getting something a bit better. So quick demonstration and a couple of things you might not know because I've never had a rotator so just simple things I never really understood. On this one anyway you just you can press left and right. So there we go that's spinning. Press right spinning back while I hold it down. Now if I press a memory button I've just pressed B and let go it's now going to that position. Now this is the one thing that I wasn't sure about, is whether or not they actually spin continuously uh, without hitting a limit, but they, this one doesn't. It will come back, it will say position zero, so f zero degrees basically. That It won't go any further. So therefore you don't have to worry about, you know, your connecting cables and things. Is it going to keep going round and round and round? Because it just won't let you, basically. It just won't let you do it. And obviously if you've only got a bi-directional uh, rotary dipole like I've got you, you don't need to ever even spin it you only ever need to spin it 180 degrees at most and probably not even that so there we go it's spinning round so the what happens now these brackets here they bolt onto my main mast and then you've got your your extra little piece of mast that's narrower it's about 45 mil I think it needs to be uh, you can then go up another meter or two or whatever from there and that's where the actual antenna bolts on so happy days I've not, I know a few people have got similar things to these um, that have got like 10 meter beams on them and they seem to work they do the job yeah it's not you know it's not gonna last forever it's not gonna take a massive 40 meter Yagi or whatever uh, but it'll do for what I'm doing here 
and the chances are I'll get told to take it down and I'll just end up using it portable. <laughs> Anyway, next job. We're waiting for a pole to arrive from Moonraker that's going to bolt onto the top of here. I think it's a two metre uh, aluminium pole I'm waiting for. Once I've got that, I can um, I can put it up, basically. I still haven't got the antenna, but I can put the two metre Yagi up there. And I can put the Sigma HF 360 on top of that pole. I know it's pointless because it's a vertical, but it means it will be much higher than it is at the moment. So that in itself will be a win. Well here is a pole that arrived today from Moonraker. As you can see it's quite tall, it almost reaches the roof. It's about 44 mil. Uh, it's a bit longer than I <laughs> thought it was going to be. The one I wanted they didn't have in stock so I bought this one instead. But I might need to cut it down a bit. This is actually going to go on the top of the rotator but I think it's a bit long. But we'll see. Better too long than too short I guess. So obviously the rotator now needs to be connected up to the pole with a couple of U-bolts. I mean obviously that pole is way too long in my opinion for that kind of stubby connection there. Uh, I guess it all depends on what you put on it at the end of the day. It's only a light pole, it really is light. Uh, it probably looks worse than it is to be fair. Let's get the bolts done up. So I'll just check in the manual here in case I don't want to do it wrong. Obviously want it to be as strong as possible. These two U-bolts have just been put into here. The mast obviously goes in and then these two on here. So we can put these on with the nuts on loose for the moment. Get the mast in, do it up and see how uh, <laughs> rigid it actually feels. I mean, obviously it'll feel rigid once it's bolted together. <laughs> it just feels a bit wrong. <laughs> I think we just need to be brave. In the words of Maverick on, uh, uh, what is it, Top Gun, don't think just do we've got these little grippy i don't know what you call them they're kind of nuts that have got the grippy spring on the back there to obviously stop it undoing itself i don't know what you call them never really seen them before i've seen spring washers and, and loctite nuts and stuff but this is a new one on me and i grew up on a farm and everything so you thought i would have seen them but no anyway let's get the pole connected so here's the amazon basics toolkit i think 100 odd quid absolutely brilliant i've had it a couple of years it's not broken and i've done all the repairs on my truck and all the antenna work with this kit it's got everything in there the only thing it doesn't have is the bigger socket so i've got an extra set of sockets to go with it uh, but yeah it's quite good quality actually quite surprised i can't remember who recommended it to me now but i'm glad they did because for the price it's brilliant and you know you've got it all in one narrow form factor as well so yeah happy days perfect for the job okay it's connected up I've done it up tight but not stupid tight and it feels pretty good so bloody great pole I think it's a bit big really but we can always cut it off later and it is very light but for the moment I need to connect it back up to the controller so here's the three wires uh, yellow blue red one two three I've checked in the bottom there I've put the cover back on now but yellow blue red is one two and three which correlates to it says one two and three below the terminals now your colors might be different so don't if you're following along or anything you do need to take the uh, cover off the bottom of the rotator to check which color is connected to which terminal doesn't matter what the colors are you just need to get one to one and two to two and three to three so we'll do that and the plan is I want to get this set at an angle because it goes from 0 to 360. I'm going to be putting it up so that the motor is pointing north. So the, the fat side of this motor will be facing straight north which is north off the side of my building. That for me needs to be, well that would be 0 degrees. Now that wouldn't be 0 degrees on the actual uh, meter it would be well what would it be it would be uh, it's going to be 100 180 degrees so basically it's pointing the wrong way <laughs> it really needs to point backwards um, but I guess it doesn't matter because at the end of the day as long as the antenna is set at zero degrees when I put it on then it will match so as long as I've got it at zero and I point the antenna north when I put it up then I know where it's pointing just by looking at the screen. 
Right, there we go. So the main kind of beefy bit of this is pointing the opposite way of the fat side of the motor. Um, so that's north, that's going to be north, zero degrees. And then obviously it will have to do a full rotation uh, to get to kind of northwest. I guess you can go back around the other way or whatever. But at the end of the day, that's how I'm doing it. Not sure if this is the right process. I just want to make sure that the zero on there correlates to real world zero. So I don't have to worry about any calibration, resetting, all that sort of jazz. I'm probably oversimplifying it or missing something, or maybe I'm overcomplicating it, I don't know. But let's just do it. Okay, so we're starting small. Five element, two meter Yagi. Trouble is, I've just realized I need a, a 90 degree kind of standoff for it. So I screwed the job up for now. So we're putting that to one side. So I thought, okay, let's let's try a ham stick die pole. Because I want to start small. I don't just want to shove something huge up there. And <laughs> we need to kind of start small. This is a ham stick die pole center. Trouble is, I've lost the the hot side, if you like. If you've got one of these, you'll know why. Uh, basically, I took it down. It wasn't tight and it just fell off in the gravel somewhere and I didn't notice. So what I've done is ordered one of these from Moonraker. I could have just ordered another hamstick dipole but they're 20, about £25. I only need the little bracket and I'm sure if I contacted them they'd send me one out but I don't want to wait, I don't want to mess around with emails and stuff. So for the sake of, you know, six quid, I've just ordered this bracket uh, as well and then I can take that connector off and put it on this hamstick dipole to get it working again. So obviously what will happen is this will go at the top of here and then 20 or 40 meter hamstick either side and then we'll see how we get on. I mean I'm not, you know, I know a hamstick dipole is going to be rubbish isn't it but I'm right next to the water here. I'm literally surrounded by water. I reckon if I can get a hamstick dipole high enough, which this will be, that could be a game changer. That could work quite well. Um, on 20 meters anyway. I'm not saying 40 is going to be any good, but you never know. I think it's worth a try because the biggest problem here is noise. And if I can get this high enough, even if I even if I'm only using it for receive, that's fine. I've got another TX antenna. I just need something that's a bit more sensitive on receive that isn't going to pick up all the noise. So this this could be good enough. I mean, arguably you don't need a rotator for this. Um, but obviously there's going to be other directional antennas up there as well. So that's the plan and when the next bits arrive we'll, we'll carry on filming. <laughs> 